Welcome to Tech for PD. I'm Chad Jackson. And I'm Jim Brown. Today we're here to talk to you about design suites. And we're going to touch base on uh, our favorite topic, granularity versus integration. <laughs> So Chad, why are we talking about integration again? And this time, uh, why, why design tools why and CAD? CAD? Yeah, it's, that's a really good question. So um, parametric 3D modeling has been around for a long time, but uh, over the past few decades, it has spread its tendrils throughout the company. Right. right. So first you start out with drawings and associativity. You change the model, it updates on the drawing back and forth. But you know, next it proceeded downstream. Right. right, you started to be able to program CNC machines, CMM machines, started to design molds, dyes, those types of things, and associativity was very important there. Right. Well, and we're also starting to see the use of 3D, whether it's parametric or, or not, um, seeing it drive into things like technical publications, yep. training, okay. service manuals. So the 3D has really gotten some legs to it, in addition to being able to, you know, once you've got a a solid, you can use that for simulation and analysis as well. So yeah. we're starting to see a tremendous amount more on that. Yeah, and it's actually not all about creating a deliverable or performing analysis. Uh, it's used in other ways too, just to view stuff. So for example, you look at a procurement department, a lot of times yeah. they need to look, just visually look at the part and see if they might be able to exchange it out for a functionally equivalent part um, to get a better pricing. Yeah, and, and I think that's why we're seeing a lot more of these integrated suites and we're starting to see the design tool suites really starting to grow. Um, I'll, I'll take Dasso and, and V6 for example. Yeah. Um, you're seeing a lot more working together out of the box on the same data model and, and I, I think that's really what PTC was uh, thinking about with the, a lot of with Creo is mm -hmm. common data model with different apps for different purposes. Uh, but we're starting to see a, a more integrated approach using the same data. Right, yeah. Well, and there's some granular offerings out Absolutely, there as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at something like SpaceClaim, uh, Kubotech is another really good example, IronCAD. But you know what also is really interesting about this? You know, you mentioned a lot of software providers offering mm -hmm. integrated suites. Uh, a lot of the tools actually can be used in a more granular fashion now. It's interesting. So, and the whole idea there is that when, when you talk about granularity, it's... Right being used for a small application, not necessarily being used in lots of other ones. Yeah. So, well, let's, uh, let's jump into the debate next. Sounds good. All right. So, Chad, why don't you uh, share your position, however yeah. misguided it may be. <laughs> sure. So, uh, my position is, is um, I I'm in favor of granular solutions, granular apps in the CAD space. And my rationale is it's important to enable as many individual roles uh, in the design and product development process as possible. And I think if, you're, if you have a standard uh, integrated suite that's designed for typically for one uh, role and you push that on everybody else, it just falls on its face. Yeah. So I, obviously I'm going to take the other opinion on this and at, at the risk of taking the integration role after brushing my teeth with Wasabi the last time, um, I still feel strongly about integration. I, mm. I think there's, um, so, so to state my position, I think we're going to see uh, more commonality of data and we're going to see vendors creating more integrated suites and, and bringing them to market and that those are going to provide more value. And there's just too much translation of data there, you know, that introduces errors. Uh, we lose information every time we translate going from one system to the other. Mm -hmm. um, all right. I can so, tell you agree. <laughs> so actually, uh, you know, I think data translation was a huge issue in the past. Um, I think it was, it was detrimental for sure. But I, I think there have been a few advances that have mitigated that problem. Mm -hmm. and, and number one, I think the standards, the data translation standards, Step and I just have improved a lot uh, in recent years. And secondly, if you think about direct modeling, types of approaches, it kind of undermines the need to try and get features over during translation. So you have a mechanism to make changes. Now you can just push and pull on geometry. You don't need parametrics. You don't need features. So, Right. So, so what you're saying is you don't need that information that gets lost along the way. And, and I think the point is you need all of that information along the way. So, um, you know, to me, I think it's important to have that information once you put it in, follow the design all the way through. And I, you know, in terms of I just in step, 
I, I think what you're going to see is the vendors are going to be the ones that are going to invest in an integrated model, making everything work together. Um, and, and to be honest, if we wait for standards bodies to harmonize everything that's happening out there, mm. not in our lifetime. Yeah. All right. Well, the good thing is, is that you get to choose who's right and vote. All right, so next let's talk about the future of integrated or granular CAD approaches. Uh, Jim, what do you think? Yeah, so what I think we're going to see is the same thing we've seen in other suites of applications is that there's mm -hmm. a core set of applications and tools that you know, use the same data. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see innovation around the edge of that. We're going to see new, new tools added in, and then those will be assimilated into the suite. Mm -hmm. And that'll be through either you know, the suite vendors buying things or, uh, you know, acquiring companies and bringing it in or building it themselves. And then there will be another concentric ring of innovation around that. And they're going to continue to grow and grow, um, you know, as we go to get to larger and larger suites. And we've seen that over and over again. I kind of think of it as, as you know, innovation around the edges getting sucked into the board, right? Uh, all um, right. But then yeah. all communicating together and working together more cleanly okay. because they're integrated by the vendor. Uh, that, that's interesting. I think it's a very valid perspective, and, and I agree. Um, I think something that will be a little bit different in that dynamic, though, is that um, a lot of those, you know, you talked about different approaches being integrated mm -hmm. into the core set of capabilities. Um, I think a lot of those various capabilities can be part of uh, individual uh, apps or granular apps that can be used by different roles in the enterprise. And I think more and more software providers are realizing that and they're designing it for those different users. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely so. agree. I think we're starting to see um, the, the application that's supposed to do everything for everybody starting to really hit the limit. and. and mm -hmm vendors starting to realize we need to break it down into much smaller right. pieces, even if it's working off of something that's larger and more complex behind the scenes, masking that yes. from the end users. And I, yeah, I absolutely think we're going to see that going yeah. forward. So Makes a ton of sense. All right, good. Well, that ends our crystal ball session. Now let's take a look at the consequences from the last episode. We're going to try... Six saltines in one minute, all at a time. Oh, oh, not a good idea. Oh. <laughs> one. Uh, oh. Oh. Two. <laughs> thanks for joining us today on this session of Tech for PD. And a special thanks to our sponsors. We'll see you next time.